Okay, so the long-standing question is how do you activate the contactor in the zero module? And the simple answer is uh, you just jumper um, terminal P6 to P8 like they do with this connector and you apply three to three and a half volts between the signal pin and the negative terminal. Now here's an example. What I have is I'm actually getting power for this circuit from the battery here going through this five volt power supply. Got a couple of resistors here, uh, 10K and a 15K. So I'm splitting the voltage. So I'm dropping three volts over this 15,000 or 15K resistor. So I'm making, uh, so I've got the positive side here wired into the pin. And I've got, <laughs> excuse me, the negative side coming off from there, here with this wire. Um, and I'm just going to reach in there and go to the negative side of the um, terminal here. And the contactor just closed. And so now we have access to charge that or discharge it. So I'm going to let it go and it turns off. So it's very easy to activate the contactor in this module. You just have to uh, jumper those two uh, terminals. Here, I'll show you exactly. We, we've made a wire harness to do it right here. This wire harness jumps um, P6 to P8 right here. And... Uh, all we'd have to do is apply uh, to this other terminal, which is the enable uh, P3 pin. So that's one thing. The other uh, thing um, that I was very confused about was how do we activate the charger just by itself? For instance, if I want to use this charger with another battery pack, not with the zero module. So there is not, you know, any CAN communications going on be, be, between the, the charger and the battery module. What's going on is just a, there's only one signal a wire in here. There's actually only three conductors coming out of this, this wire. There's the high voltage plus and minus, which it's not, when you just plug this charger in, it, there is no voltage there. Uh, it has to be connected to a battery. Once it's connected to a battery, um, you know, like say something that's probably at least 100 volts, then what, there's a, another wire here, just one wire, and that wire is three volts from here to the minus. It's like three and a half volts or 3.2 volts from here to minus, and then three volts from here to the positive terminal. But if you, if you just close this, if you just take the signal wire and attach it to the negative, it then starts charging. And, and that is how the that charger is enabled. So simply, we just need a contactor that connects the signal wire to the, the negative side. The charger then is fully functional and it'll charge to 16.6 .6 volts, or excuse me, 116.6 or 116.7 volts is what it will charge to. So obviously if you had it hooked up to some other battery and you don't want to charge that high, you just um, disconnect the, the enable signal at whatever voltage you want to stop charging at. So that's a simple contact closure to cause this to work. This is just a simple uh, three and a half volt applied uh, to this uh, between the minus and the signal pin, P3. So those work together because this has, uh, from the factory has the three and a half volts. And when you plug it into the, the battery module, the battery module gets the three and a half volts it needs. So it closes the contactor. And when it closes the contactor, then the charger sees the 106, you know, the 100 plus volts it's, it needs. And it also has uh, um, effectively shorted the 
a signal wire to the minus side. And so it has the two things it needs, high voltage plus the signal wire to the minus. So by plugging these, the charger to the module, we get everything we need. The module closes the contactor, charger starts charging. What the battery module does as it gets fully charged um, up around, uh, we actually charted it here. Once it gets up to around, uh, um, well, if it's starting to have problems, what it does is it turns the charger on and off, and that's how it tapers off the charge current. It's doing pulse width modulation. It's not actually varying the output of the charger. It's just turning the charger on for like eight seconds. What does it turn it on? And then off here. It actually was on and off. Uh, it turns the charger on for eight seconds, and then it turns it off for five seconds on off on off and that's how it modulates the charging at the end of the cycle now um it was doing that on this battery uh the one with the, the green lettering on it because i think there's something wrong with one of the cells one of the cells is out of balance there and so it was like having problems and it it couldn't charge to the full 116 volts because I, one or a couple of those cells are going high and so it it was modulating the charger turning it on off on off trying to get a higher state of charge but the best it could do on that battery is it got it to right here it got it to 114 and a half volts and it, then it's just it just gave up. And uh, on the other one, it it uh, just continued charging. It kept everything probably all the cells were in balance, and it actually never modulated the battery. It allowed the battery charger to go to its full voltage. And as it got up, to, you can see this on the chart. It got up to just over 116 volts, like 100. And, 16.6 volts and it was holding it there and what was happening well the charger was outputting that voltage but the amperage and so the current um, the watts going into this battery module the one that doesn't have the green writing on it was just going down 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 over time and um, so at the end it was only drawing about 300 watts and uh, so it's just barely you know, the battery is fully charged. All the cells were probably about in balance, and that equals 116.6 volts or 106. Yeah. So um, that's how a battery module would charge correctly to full, full voltage. If you got a cell balance problem, which that one probably does, then the BMS is going to try and uh, modulate how fat, how much we're charging, trying to get those cells back in balance. Um, so we got to do some work on that one and find out what's wrong. So we got to read the cell logs on that one. Well, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, let's see. So we know that we don't need CAN bus to to charge or discharge these batteries. We now know how to close the contacts. We don't have to use these mechanical things here to close, open and close those. We know how to use these chargers with these battery modules, but also with other batteries, like for instance, in the Ford Festiva, we're gonna charge those. But we need to, um, to monitor our voltage and be able to turn these chargers off uh, so they don't uh, overcharge the batteries we're charging with them. Those are charging it at like around a thousand watts, a thousand seventy-two watts is what they put out. So they're not a super high capacity charger, but I have two of them. So, and they run on two twenty or one ten, and are waterproof and vibration resistant. So they're they're nice chargers. I think that's about it. Um, good to go.